but it is time for member statements. A reminder to all members as they come in to please be respectful of others who have the floor. Thank you. Member statements. Okay, I recognize a member from Perth Wellington. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, for many students, um, visiting a local farm is a highlight of the school year, but it is a highlight that they had to go without this year. Speaker, if you can bring students to the farm, why not bring, if you can't bring students to the farm, why not bring the farm to the students? And that's exactly what two Perth Wellington families set out to do. Amanda Twist and her husband James of Maple Twist Farms in Damascus raise chickens, cattle, and pigs. Their goal is to open a store on site and offer customers the chance to see the farm and the animals, but the pandemic forced them to postpone this. Instead, they created a YouTube series called Fun Facts and Farm Chats. The project is intended to bring kids closer to the farm and closer to where their food comes from. The videos are based on elementary school curriculum. Their 10-year-old son, Colton, is involved as well, and I'm told he is quite engaged in raising their chickens. Jess and Ryan Pfister, who also farmed in Damascus, started Pfister Farm School. They also wanted to give young people a way to spend a day on the farm. Their one-minute videos are geared towards grades one to three. Parents and teachers can use them as a resource. They also allow classrooms to ask a farmer. Each class can submit up to five questions. It's good to see that farm families in Perth, Wellington promoting agriculture and education. We take pride in our world-class farms and agricultural businesses. We grow some of the safest and best quality food in the world, and I want to thank Mabel Twist Farm and Pfister Farm for bringing their farms to the classroom. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Next statement, the member for Brampton Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, for months, farmers in India have been peacefully protesting against harmful agricultural reform bills that would have detrimental impacts to their livelihoods. These peaceful protesters, many of them seniors, have been met with brutal violence and have been detained, often illegally. Activists and journalists like Nodeep Kaur and Disha Ravi have been subjected to torture and other abuses by the Indian police. And as the great-granddaughter of a farming family from a rural village in Punjab, I am proud to stand in solidarity with those on the ground in India and around the world and members of the diaspora who continue to raise their voices against these injustices. I want to thank organizations like Khalsa Aid, United Six, and the Sikh Motorcycle Club for providing support to those protesters and helping to educate communities about these protests, one of the largest in human history. I also want to encourage members of this House to also learn more about the protests in India and to understand how they can, too, raise their voices. Because as Dr. King Jr. once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, and we all have a responsibility to raise our voices and stand in solidarity. To the farmers in India, we are with you, we hear you, we see you. Continue on in solidarity. Uh, Mr. Speaker, during this difficult year, the people of Ontario have had to appreciate the things that truly matter in their lives. For many Ontarians, including many of my constituents in Ajax, religious faith and worship have been important, vital means to cope with the pandemic. In fact, according to StatsCan's National uh, Household Survey, 75% of Ontarians profess some form of religious faith, and Mr. Speaker, in Ajax, that takes the form of 30 places of worship. Churches, mosques, temples, synagogues, and other places of worship have always been an integral to the social fabric of our community in Ajax and in Durham Region. In addition, of course, to worship services, those, uh, those facilities operate food banks, charities, childcare, and other supports for the most vulnerable in our community. Recognizing the crucial role that these religious institutions play in Ajax, like many members of this House, I've been working closely and regularly with local faith leaders to provide support and make sure that there is mutual understanding as they face the challenges of operating safely and providing spiritual, emotional, and, and physical health support for our community. Mr. Speaker, later this morning, I'm proud that along with our faith leaders, I'll be meeting with Dr. Robert Kyle, Durham's Chief Medical Officer of Health, and Dr. Pepe McTavish, the Associate Medical Officer of Health, to talk about safety concerns and ensure that our faith institutions can continue to support our community. Mr. Speaker, 
working together with public health officials, we'll continue to ensure that our places of worship can support Ajax and be a model across our province. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next statement, the member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, the Ford government announced that on March 15th, residents can begin booking appointments for COVID-19 vaccines. Frankly, people are upset that they had to wait this long for that information. In Quebec and Alberta, seniors are already able to book their life-saving vaccines. The Premier blames the Prime Minister, yet other Premiers have been able to get vaccines for their residents. Over 360 people have died in Niagara, and neither the Premier, the Minister of Health, or anyone from the Ford government, including the member from Niagara West, has answered the question the residents of Niagara want to know. So I'll ask them again. Where exactly were our life-saving Moderna vaccines diverted to, and when can we expect our fair share sent back to Niagara? Appointments don't mean anything if residents in Niagara can't actually get the vaccine. The vaccine is the only way we can safely end the Premier's cycle of shutdowns and infections. This Premier has failed the people of Niagara when it comes to COVID-19 vaccine rollout. The residents of Niagara are owed answers and their fair share of vaccines. The people of Niagara deserve to know if the COVID-19 vaccines they were promised and are now owed. Will they actually be available for them when the vaccine hotline opens? And again, I'll repeat, 360 people have died in Niagara of COVID-19, most in long-term and retirement homes. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Speaker. We've just come to the end of February, which is heart month. COVID-19 has had an impact on heart health in many ways. People with heart conditions can be vulnerable to more severe outcomes, and COVID may also cause damage to the heart's vascular system of previously healthy individuals. The pandemic may be discouraging, may just be discouraging some people from experiencing heart disease or stroke in Ontario from seeking medical care. But this month, Heart Month, is a good reminder that our hospitals and healthcare providers are doing everything they can to keep patients safe. And it is a reminder that the risks of ignoring symptoms of heart conditions or stroke is far greater than the risk of seeking medical care you need. And it's a reminder to make sure to keep your scheduled medical appointments and let your healthcare practitioner know if you're experiencing any changes in your health. Because every minute counts, Speaker. And as the team at RVH reminds me, time is muscle. If you experience symptoms or you know someone who is having symptoms of a stroke or a heart attack, please call 911 right away. And to mark heart health this month, I joined MPP Doug Downey, who invited me to join the Heart and Stroke Month Challenge by a jumping rope for heart and stroke, and I challenged Councillor Natalie Harris to do the same. This campaign will help heart and the Heart and Stroke Foundation continue to make a difference in the heart health of all Canadians. Thank you. The member for Davenport. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Ontarians are waking up today to news that our province is not ready to deliver the COVID-19 vaccine, and there will be even more delays. Seniors over 80 won't be able to book an appointment until March 15th. Those in the 60 to 65 group still at high risk will have to wait until Canada Day. Essential workers are still waiting for Cabinet to decide when they'll get the shot. And while this government hasn't even shared details about how people will be able to sign up, in Quebec and Alberta today, people are able to call or go online to set up their appointments. We are in a race against time. Faster spreading variants are taking hold now. We learned today that kids and staff at schools in my riding have been exposed to the variants. I spoke with a public health nurse yesterday here in Toronto who told me they are very, very afraid. My constituents, good people like Linda Grabowski, who I spoke with just minutes ago, are wondering what this government has been waiting for. Essential workers, seniors, small businesses cannot afford another make-it-up-as-you-go plan from this government. When will the Premier stop idling and shift this vital immunization campaign into high gear so we can save lives? Thank you. 
The next statement, the member for Ottawa Vanier. Uh, thank you, merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, the federal government announced its plan to reinforce its uh, bill on official languages and to strengthen French language rights throughout the country. Their rights are extremely important, but it's also a reminder of what we have to continue to do provincially. Francophones have the right to receive services in French, whether it's in education, health. These services are essential for our communities. In my riding of Ottawa, Vanier in Ottawa, we are lucky to have uh, different uh, francophone institutions, such as the Montfort Hospital, where they offer services in French. I'm also thinking of school boards that provide French education, high-quality French ed education in Ottawa, and also post-secondary institutions that offer French language services. These services exist thanks to all of the devoted work by francophones, but they should have to fight. Most regions don't have access to the services in a fair manner. The government has made certain efforts and progress in terms of recognizing the contributions of the francophone community, notably recently with the, the francophone flag and also in providing more legal rights to francophones. I'm happy to recognize those improvements, and I encourage the government to continue going forward with similar improvements. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Chatham-Kent Leamington. Thank you very much, Speaker. Well, everyone, you know, if you haven't noticed, it's getting kind of cold outside, and it may be time to get those thick winter jackets out, those warm Canadian mittens, and that nice wool toque that Grandma knitted for you last Christmas. You know, the one that you haven't had a chance to wear yet. But you want to make sure that you're all prepared and bundled up for whatever the weather may bring. But sadly, this may not be the case for everyone. You know, as the weather gets extremely cold, many are left to fend for themselves on the streets, using whatever they can to keep themselves warm at night. Shelters are quickly reaching capacities as less fortunate people must line up early to get a warm spot to stay. Now, Chatham Kent sees that struggle, and I stand here today to proudly talk about an event that made a difference in my hometown. On Saturday, February 20th, neighbor, neighbor Link Chatham Kent hosted the 2021 Coldest Night of the Year walk. In total, 21 teams and 135 walkers, to which I was captain of our office's team, set out to walk the usual five-kilometer route following COVID-19 guidelines to raise money and awareness for charities serving people experiencing homelessness. I'm pleased to announce that we raised over $49,000, which surpassed their initial goal of $30,000. And this money can now be used towards NeighborLink Chatham Kent's exciting initiatives to help provide free of charge food and transportation to local residents. Even though the walk was on Sunday, anyone can still donate today by visiting the Coldest Night of the Year website. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next statement, the member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Earlier this month, I met a young woman who is a trained doctor. She immigrated to Canada with a medical degree and since has faced immense obstacles, unable to practice as a doctor. When the world was opening the doors for foreign trained doctors during the COVID-19 pandemic, she and many other IMDs, international med medical graduates, took the initiative to register so they could serve the people of Ontario on the front lines alongside other doctors, but were not able to do anything other than volunteer. This young woman and her colleagues have been facing barrier after barrier while trying to find a way to work as physicians in Ontario. IMDs and foreign trained physicians work day and night to complete their qualification exams, but the current system makes it almost impossible for them to achieve any validated experience that will take them to the next step. This is not an isolated story, Mr. Speaker. Many highly qualified and educated professionals come to Canada in search for better opportunities, for a better life, and for the future of their children. Yet systemic barriers make it almost impossible to find work in their fields and end up working minimum wage jobs despite working on the front lines serving our communities. Mr. Speaker, Ontario is home to many immigrants and refugees who have settled here. 
We take pride in our diversity and our multiculturalism. Our government must work together to build a comprehensive strategy to support foreign-trained workers across all fields and ensure that we are preventing brain drain and de-skilling amongst immigrant communities across Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I was made aware of a truly remarkable story from my riding of a group of volunteers who are going above and beyond to ensure people have a place to skate. In today's difficult times, places to go to get fresh air and exercise are so important. In Castleton, volunteers have set up three ice surfaces and a concrete for kids and families to skate on at the Castleton Sports Clubs. Many volunteers have made this possible, but I'd like to give a special shout out to Jeff Turney, Stacey King, and Bruce Bond, who routinely visit the rinks in the early mornings, mid-afternoon, evening, to make sure that the ice is okay, that there's flooding and maintenance of the rinks. Community rinks like these are essential to life in rural Ontario. And these volunteers arrive sometimes as early as 5.30 in the morning, putting countless hours in. The community sees the work they do, and we honour it. There's been no issues at the rink. Folks respect distancing regulations, and the last one out turns out the lights. That's the way we do it in small town Ontario. The rinks are located just beside Northumberland Hills Public School. Kids come to skate after school. It's been going on for so long now that the older kids help the younger kids ice up their skates, provide pucks to play some pickup, and all is done while safely respecting public health guidelines. The rinks are located, as I said, at Castleton Sports Club, a non-for-profit charity. So I would like to thank all the volunteers, especially Jeff, Stacy, and Bruce. Thank you for what you do to our community every day. We honour you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. Leader of the Opposition has a point of order. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, I seek unanimous consent for the House to observe a moment of silence to pay tribute to the 120 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 uh, over the past week. Leader of the Opposition is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to, pay, to observe a moment of silence to pay tribute to the 120 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 over the past week. Agreed? Agreed. 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 Members will please rise. Thank you. Members may take their seats. <laughs> Member for London West has a point of order. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I seek unanimous consent to move a motion regarding the accelerated passage of Bill 239, the Stay Home If You Are Sick Act, to help in the fight against COVID-19. Member for London West is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to move a motion regarding the accelerated passage of Bill 239, the Stay at Home If You Are Sick Act, to help in the fight against COVID-19. Agreed? Agreed. I heard a no.